That's what it's all about right there. Check this out right here. Check this out. Is that right there? Alright. 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 For a portion right here. Alright, let's set this up. There's a lot. That was, what was the, what's the sound that? No, you gotta know the truth. You gotta know the truth, not believe. Anyway, this is um when the 41st, the 41st Torah portion. We're still in the 40, and this is the 23rd, the week of the 23rd or the the 120th. See if we can bring this up right here. And we put up a part one to the Torah portion, right? And let's get it right here on our chart. You can download this from the LOJ Society um, study page. It's on the study page. A lot of other freeware and shareware. Mm hmm. Easy. Okay, so. Here we go right here. Let's see if we can straighten this out. All right. So um, when Phineas and the revelations, you know, just the clarification of revelation have been so abundant on this particular subject matter and throughout this Torah portion as we, as we go through another cipher, another circle of um, reading and study and also seeing seeing the code, seeing the real code in the real world. So the overstanding of God's word, it removes that veil from my and I eyes. So some of this hopefully I'll be able to um articulate here, um, in this particular one, because there's a few kind of points on this, but this is called um Finhas. Finhas. Or you see right here it says um it says uh pinches or really pinchas. Pinchas. Let's zoom that in so you can see it within the Royal Amharic. Within the Royal Amharic. Um, now, something very significant happened then, and the revelation was that it's the same thing that's happening now, but if we keep listening to the Gentiles, Gentile, the white Eurocentric world, miss, miss um, translation and misunderstanding because of the racism. That's why. You know, many of the European scholars, they, they did discover some things for themselves that they didn't know before. But it's their racism that blinded their eyes to the real overstanding. So some things, the, the, the majority, you know, in the half of the story, as we say, um, has not been told until now, until Rastafari revelation. So we're in the 41st, right, the 41st, from last Shabbat, the Senbet, to the Shabbat coming. And... In the midst of that, or at the beginning, the head of that was um, Nagusa Neges um, Lidet Ken, or the son of man's um, Lij Teferi's um, birthday, Earth Day, the son of man's Earth Day. And we sought to address some of the, um, the, the mystery of God and Christ from the Word, from the Scripture, along with the true the true um, story or the true Tariq, the true his story, not his story, but his story, the story of the King of Kings and his Christ. So here we're in Phinehas, Phinehas or Phineas. Now this comprises or this consists of, let's move this over right here. This consists of um, Numbers chapter 25. In the Old Testament, in the Torah portion, Numbers chapter 25, um, verse 10 to Numbers chapter 30, verse 1. The Haftarah, the Missa, in, in the Old Testament, the Missa, like the, the, the reading upon just before um, the, the synagogue or the gathering, what we call the Ayabingi, was let out in the Old Testament time in true Afro-Judaism Afro or African Judaism, the, the, the roots, the true roots of Rastafari. Now, that reading is 1 Kings 18.46 to 19.21. Now, we have the New Testament now in the Revelation. This means that 
we recognize the black messiah. So the veil is taken off of our, and our eyes in that recognition of the black messiah. And for those who don't know, let's just give you a reminder right here. The black messiah, Nagusa Neges, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, that son of man, that prophetic son of man, that child of humanity, says a little child shall lead them. All right, so now, in going forward in um, Finhas, and this is one of the reasons why we had this particular, this is called in, in the, among the American um, Indians who also have a, a link, some say are directly of the Beit Israel or of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And when we start to really get into the, the roots of that, we can see, that that probability, not just a possibility. So we, we basically use this particular um, imagery right here because we wanted to get some imagery to to help to better um, teach this portion. And we wasn't able to find all the imagery, so we're going to deal with some of the basics of the word, all right, some of the basics of the word on this. So um, just give I and I a moment right here to bring up some of the other um, word picks. So from last... The last cipher on Phineas, or the Torah portion, the RSS, the Rastafari Sabbatical Study uh, 41, some of you might be familiar with this particular um, compilation right here that we utilize um, to describe certain of the, of the points and the matters in Phineas. For example, we touched on the name, the name Phineas. Right now, the fini, the, the the pi or the phi, pi in the Hebrew pe or pi pe is in them hard. The good is it's fi or af. So we have af, right in the Ethiopic and the, the royal Amharic, and it is op or pe in the ancient Hebrew according to certain overstandings coming out of Egypt. So there's a, there's a link right there as well. Now we use this particular, I think it's one of Tut's guard, or some say it's Tut, right, because of what Phineas does in this particular Torah portion. Now, the Nehas, the Nehas, Nehas means a upright cobra, or when we say upright wisdom, because there's two kinds of wisdom within the scripture. There's, there's the upright wisdom, or some would even say that 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 flying serpent, you understand, like the seraphim, which bit the children of Israel because they murmured, right? They murmured. They were ungrateful. They were forgetful. You understand? They came out of Egypt, but Egypt did not come out of them. So the Nehas in the Ethiopic and and the Afro-Shemitic languages refers to the snake or the serpent. Now in in Western in Western um, Christianity and Judaism, um, because so much has really been um, misinterpreted because of a Western Gentile misunderstanding, because some things they just don't know because they just don't know. They're discovering a lot of things as they find archaeology, and much of that is verifying what we and ones before us have already said. But now Phineas right here, Phineas and them are seen has, seen has, or Pinhas, Pinhas in the Hebrew. Now, what we want to do is go over the Torah portion, but we link this right here. We link this, the upright, the ni, so you can see within the pictograph, this is the pictograph here. When they moved out of the pictograph, as they began to overstand these actual nature symbols more abstractly. In other words, what we're seeing when we study even linguistics and language, we see actually, and I don't like to use this word without context, because of a false theology or false narrative of white supremacy. We see an evolution, but it's not a so-called physical evolution. It's a spiritual evolution, an evolution of thought. So that these two symbols, for those who understand, both represent a letter. They both represent um, a, a, a nature symbol. But it also represents a more abstract, a more abstract, or one can say a more metaphysical idea. You're saying the same thing with the feet, the feet, nahas, or the mouth, 
of the serpent, or this serpent, the Nehas, is that higher wisdom, the mouth of the higher wisdom. Now we can see within the um, within the phylactery boxes in Judaism, we can see this link right here. So you see how this link is 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 clearly is clearly made right over here. All right, and this is just dealing with some of the basics of the name, because then more of the story would will make sense when you understand the symbology. That's why when people read and study the Bible, they say, oh, this is, they can't understand it because what's there, they're not able to properly interpret. So this is one reason why they can't understand it. So we utilize this before. So we want to build on There's another aspect of the particular story since we've been touching on some of the goddess, you know, the goddess so-called worship or or the degeneration, the degradation of um, humanity, which is initiated or which is which is primarily done by the destruction of the black family, but also the degradation and degeneration of the black mother or the black woman. And coupled with that is also the pollution and destruction of creation. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that five-pointed star. When you look at the five-pointed star upright, you know what I'm saying? It is symbolic of woman upright, similar to the modern Ethiopian flag when it's upright. But then when you turn it on its head, this is where we get the so-called occultic witchcraft or, or magic. Um, this is where it's like turning humanity or turning, turning nature on its head. And then we get all these weapons of mass destruction. You know, like even nuclear, you, you understand with nuclear power, if properly used, it could actually, you know, be a, 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 a good thing for humanity. But instead, they make weapons of mass destruction. So what they learn from nature, because of a wisdom that is not higher wisdom, they destroy creation. You understand, so-called Mother Earth, they destroy um, creation because of that lack of wisdom or that fallen wisdom, that fallen Sophia and, and the, the sophistry of the world, all right? But then there's a higher wisdom that comes from above. So when we get to the story of Phinehas, let's bring this, bring this more into perspective because this symbol of the buffalo, this symbol of the buffalo um, warrior or the buffalo dance, but this buffalo warrior is a good symbol for um, Phinehas. Let's go through the story right here, and let's bring up, what is it? It's uh, 25. Now, what we're going to have to do is link is link forward with the previous portion, or the 40th portion, which is Balak, which is Balak. All right, so we have 25 and 10. So what we're going to do is go to um, Numbers chapter 25, and let's begin from verse from verse 1. So we're going to bring it up in the Amharic and the Eng English using the Yota or the Iota um, program. All right, so here we're in chapter, we're in chapter 25 right here. All right, here we go, chapter 25. So, you know, get your pen and your paper, your sacred scripture, and be willing to receive the half of the story that hasn't been told. To the glory of I and I, Father, Abba Kedus, in the name of our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshiach. Amen. And all the faithful Rastafari say, Amen. So, we have Orit Ze Chulk, right? The Torah of the numbering, Numbers 25. So it says, Israelim Be Setim Tek Emetu, His Boom. Kamoab Lijochgar Yamanezuru Jemmer. It says, And Israel abode in Shittim or Setim. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Now, as we said before, whenever we come across these names such as um, Shittim or Shittim, and we come across Moab, as well as even Israel, it's very important for us to have a spiritual or metaphysical understanding, a basic 
overstanding of what that name means in the Hebrew or the original ancient language because that will add much clarity to the context. Now, let me get this uh, get the scripture here. Um, all right, so the metaphysical metaphysical Bible dictionary. Let's just go to set uh, set team for a moment, just to just to help to um, paint this picture for you. And the metaphysical Bible dictionary we have in the PDF form as well as well on the lojsociety.org. Click on the study link or forward slash study. You can put um, after the website. Um, so set team or shut them, shut them, right? Set team or shut them. What is the meaning of that? Therefore, how does that clarify the context of this place that Israel abode? And how the people began to commit whoredom. What what whoredom? You understand? What is it? Just the whoredom that one would say somebody is being a whore or in whoredom. And how does that connect with how the lost sheep, Negroes, blacks, and colored, are living are living today? So here in um, the metaphysical Bible dictionary, we have um, shittim. Shittim and Shittim, as it said, means let's see this page right here. Shittim, Hebrew, it means acacias, acacias like acacia wood, right? Acacia wood or thorny, thorny. So the idea is acacia wood, but it's also thorny. So they they abode in a place setim, but setim to emetu. That was thorny. Now, now, let's keep in mind also the parables of Yeshua, of the Moshia, because it's the Moshia that when we read the Old Testament in Christ, we don't read it with a veil over our eyes. Now, if you will compare and study um, Matthew chapter 13, which is Finite Rastafari, the true spiritual metaphysical high school in Christ and his kingly character, you see where that is where the disciples now are getting the mysteries of the kingdom. And if you remember the parable of the sower, the sower going forward to sow, and some fell among what kind of ground? Some fell among thorny ground. Let's just go over that for a moment. Matthew's chapter, Matthew chapter 13, right? Matthew chapter 13. So it can help to clarify this. So we're not just looking at this two-dimensionally. We begin to see it three-dimensional and even multi-dimensionally. But in context, you know, so not, not going off on our own imaginations, but really being able to see the true image of what the Word is saying with knowledge of the Son of God. So it says right here that, um, and, uh, Behold, a soul went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. Verse 6, And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Verse 7, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns, get that right there, some fell among thorns. Some of these seeds, they fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Then it says in verse 8, But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. And he says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now then Yeshua, he explains these are the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, or more literally, Mengishta Samayat. The Samayat is not Samai. Samai is one heaven. Samayat is the heaven. So it's really the kingdom of the heavens. You might want to note that for yourself. So when you see kingdom of heaven here, it should read not in the singular, the netala, but it should read in the the bizu or the plural, right? And the and and the and more than one. It doesn't say how many. Some would say seven, but it really means the kingdom of the heavens in plural. So Christ explains that there are some who hear, but they don't understand. They see, but they don't perceive. 
and how there's a generation whose heart or consciousness is wax gross and their ears are dull of, of hearing, of that spiritual hearing with the inner ear and their eyes, they have closed. So it's like um, eyes wide shut, in other words. You know, they they seeing, seeing, but they don't, they don't, they don't perceive it. Lisa says at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand or comprehend with their heart and should be converted, right, should be converted. In other words, cross over from, from death to life, from, from ignorance to the knowledge of the Son of God. And then it says, and I should heal them. So that true healing is impossible when the, the hearing is not there, when the seeing is not there, and when the comprehension in, in heart is not there. But he says, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Then he speaks about how the prophets and the righteous have desired to see these things that we see in this very prophetic day and time. Now, he goes on to explain, you can study this for yourself, but he goes on to explain much more about, well, this parable. He says, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and that is for I and I to say, when anyone heareth the word of the king man, the king of kings, you understand, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, it says, and, um, and understandeth, or don't overstandeth it, overstand not. Then cometh the wicked, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart, that which was sown in his consciousness. You know, it's like when you say, oh, yeah, this one used to be such and such, but, like, maybe they fell off, or this one was coming along, you understand, and, 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 but somehow they fell off at a certain point. Well, it's very important for us to recognize the words of Yeshua here, Jesus Christus gave touching, because he's saying that when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, when anyone hears the word of the king mind, right, and overstand if it not, similar to that careless generation of Ethiopians at home in Ethiopia and abroad, the lost sheep over here in the West, um, that the wicked one comes and does what? Catch away, steals away that which was sown in his heart. That which was sown in his heart. It's like blacks, Negroes, blacks, and coloreds in the 60s, you know, uh, before, r roughly around that time, many of them were thinking of coming out of, you know, Babylon, coming out of this wilderness and returning home, returning to the promised land. But then they marched down to Egypt under the guidance of Martin Luther King. You understand? And this is how they went astray. So that word, you understand, was snatched out of the heart. So instead of looking at the true king of kings, they start to look at a false king. And that's why they give you Martin Luther for king. You understand? But some really can't comprehend that as of yet. You understand? But it says that when anyone hears that word of the kingdom and does not comprehend it, understand it, understand it, then cometh the wicked, the kufu the wicked one, and catch away that was sown in his heart of consciousness. Says he, this is he which received, which Kabbalah, which received. Everybody received, but it's what they received. Received seed. What kind of seed? Seed by the wayside. Right? Seed by the wayside. That's why they talk about we living in a post-racial society today, but you see, you know, racism, you know, the, you know, watch out, niggas, the, the, the clan got bigger, you know, but you can't see it. So you think they, they're not around because they're not wearing the white sheets and stuff like that, right? Verse 20, it says, but he that receiveth the seed into stony place, the same is, is he that heareth the word. And a nun, that word a nun, if you're studying the metaphys, uh, the Schofield, the Schofield reference Bible, A-N-O-N, mean immediately. Immediately with joy he received it. You know how... You might say something to somebody quick, you know, that's what, you know, so I say a lot of times, like, yeah, we may feel it, but you have to, like, you know, that balance, you know what I mean? Like, don't be too emotional and stuff like that. Don't be too quick to condemn. You can judge. You see what says judge not, it should be properly translated condemn not. You understand? Because judging is just weighing and balancing based on the evidence. If you judge, then judge true judgment, true weights, true measures. The same sort that, you know, that you would want to be measured to yourself in all righteous man. But it says that he that received the seed into stony place, the same as he that heareth the word and the nun immediately with joy received it. It's like many of, we could say, earlier generation of Rosses 
or rosters have received it, you know, with a lot of joy. But then after, you know, the events of 74 and 75, where even Burhana Salase put out the song, um, Ja Live, Ya Hai, Ja Live, Ya Hai, Ya Hai. Because many ones, you know, said, oh, Ja is dead. Ja, you know, Rasta, your God is dead. And many fell off. But many of these were those who received it immediately with joy. Yet, here's the key, verse 21, yet hath he not, he or she, uh, not root in himself. There's no groundation in themselves. You know, one say, well, I, I became Rasta because of Bob Marley, or I became Rasta because of this, or I saw a picture or something. But where's the root in yourself? Do you have this truth in yourself? Do you recognize, in other words, what this is really about? It says, but dureth for a while, so that one can coast for a while, can skylark for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, you know, when they say, Rasi, your God is dead. So how you explain that? And, and, and these ones, you know, they didn't have no explanation, so many of them either trimmed up or went back to their Babylonian ways and everything after that particular time because of the tribulation and persecution that arose because of the creeping coup, the Satanistic coup, the Illuminati coup against our father, against Kedu Sabatachin. Um, so by and by it says he is offended, you know, similar to what happened to John the Baptist, similar to what happened to Marcus Messiah Garvey, right? And it says, he also that receiveth seed among the thorns. So here we get into setim or shittim. The thorns is he that heareth the word. So they hear the word. They simat, they shema, mesmat the word. And the care of this world. Because they're trying to meet worldly standards. You know what I mean? Like they say, we shouldn't think about, like, forget about slavery, forget about reparation, forget about repatriation. You know, forget about those things. Because the care of this world or the worldly influence of worldly ones in their lives, and the deceitfulness of riches, you know, figuring that, well, once I get money, everything be straight, you know what I'm saying, straight, right? Choke the word. This is what chokes the real word, the true word, you know what I'm saying, the true seed. And he becomes unfruitful. He becomes unfruitful in the field, which is the world, for his majesty, you know what I'm saying, because of the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes, he, he becometh unfruitful. Then, of course, it says in verse 23, 2, 3, But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, overstands, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So each one according, accordingly. So that means that we're all not going to bring forth so-called fruit, in that sense, at the same level, but there is fruitfulness. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the key thing, which is according to his word. Now, the reason why we went there is just to explain a little bit more on Shittim. You know what I'm saying? This, this name here, because something very significant happened here, where Israel abode in this particular place, in a thorny place, like niggas today, blacks, Negroes, blacks, and colored, a lost sheep of the Beit Israel. We're in a thorny place. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, we got our first black president and stuff. Uh, look, look what's up, Romney. You know, we're in a real thorny place. You know what I mean? And the people began what? To commit whoredom. They began to commit whoredom. The same thing you see in all these kind of crap videos and, and the so-called shit-tim hop. The shit-tim hop or the shit hop is the same sort of thing. And with the daughters of Moab. You you remember that um that 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 eye trait right there? Well, not even eye trait. That poor trait. You understand? It's 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 a poor trait, but you know it's a poor trait of 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 where where black people where the lost sheep are at right now. So let's let's see if we can bring that one up because it's a picture. A picture is a is, is a thousand um some about a thousand words. Um, what we're we gonna do, little Kim? Should we do little Kim? Is it, is, it, is it under Little Kim as one word? We'll see if that comes up like that. But they're in a thorny place. Move this over. They're in a thorny place. So we can see that connection. We know who the lost sheep of the Beit Israel are. You understand? And we know that there's a connection here with this present part of this dispensation that we're in. I mean, how do we know this? All the signs are there. You understand? Once you can decode 
once you know what the code is and you can decode it. So the lost sheep right now, we're in a thorny place, right? And in this thorny place, what are people doing? Are they trying to find, like, a way out of this? Are they trying to repent? Are they trying to seek Jai's favor? You know, say no. People go out to the parties and the clubs. You understand, and the strip joints. You understand, all these are places where the same sort of whoredom is committed, as is spoken of in this particular Torah portion. The same sort of whoredom that is committed, as in this particular Torah portion. Let's see if we have this. Um, let's see if we have this picture right here. Okay, um, 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 but this is the image. This is the image. Let's let's give you the image. You understand the image of 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 the Moabites. You understand or the woman of Moab. Now, there's a very interesting segue to this. You know, what I mean, because one will say, well, Moabite wasn't supposed to enter into the congregation of the Lord, right? So then, how come you know the whole roof thing? You understand? And we'll, we'll explain that, you know, as well. So here. Let's bring up the Phineas type right here, and let's bring up, these are the kind of daughters right here that they committed abomination with. Can you see that well? You understand? Well, brothers, you want to see a little, a little bit more? You understand? See, 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 see what happened to the Israelites? You understand? See what happened to the Israelites? And it's, you know, <laughs> they catch you on this old macho macho thing, like, well, I'm a man because such and such and such. That's also part of the the sorcery, as part of the witchcraft, as a part of the spell. You understand? That's a part of the kind of um, subliminal uh, mind control right there. Um, where's this one with uh, uh, Nicki Minaj? Should I, should I have looked up Nicki instead? Nicki Minaj. Um, let's see. All right, bring that up right there. Um, this was working on this too, some Moabite woman, um, namely the Oprah's and the um Brianna's and the um who's this one? Um J Hud, Jennifer Hudson, the Jennifer Hudson type. If you would look at that that brandy vid, it's, it's really weird. If you really look at the art, so called black people's you know, the art that they're doing and in, in, in the music, movies, and that what image they're projecting. It's not really an image that black people, whether here, you understand, or in any recent time of Africa, you understand, even really know because it's an old time something. It says that, uh, Josh said that the people will return hither. They'll return hither again to this particular prophetic um, point and space in time. So anyway, let's go through with the scripture right here. So the people abode, right, in a place called in a place called Shittim. We know Shittim means a thorny a thorny place. Right now in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary the Meta Metaphysical Bible Dictionary has 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 this to say. Right? The Metaphysical Bible Dictionary says this right here. It says that it was a place in Moab. Now, remember, Moab and Ammon, they were the children of Lot's incest, of Lot's incest. And it's interesting in Ethiopic, um, Lot, Lot or Lot, Lot means to change, right? Lot means to change, but it means to change um, in the sense of homosexuality, Lot, in the, in the older form of um, Amharic writing and even in some scriptures. So it was Lot that had, remember Sodom and Gomorrah and the wife turning around and she being turned into a pillar of salt. And then Lot and his daughters, they went to a cave and the girls thought that they were the last people on earth according to the narrative. And they got their father drunk and they had sex with him and they had children. And these children were Ammon and Moab. You understand? Or the um, Madakila, you understand? Um, like bastards, you know what I mean? In that sense. But then also something genetic also happens too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, almost when we say, I don't like to use this because people might have, you know, children or certain things. It's not speaking to them, but it's almost like the idea when people say someone is, is like um, the mongoloidism and people say retard or like, you, you know, like you don't understand. You know, it's like people are hooked. Like, knowing what these people know, 
and, and, and uh, uh, coming from the so-called good church backgrounds, like how all these, um, you know, musicians come from these so-called, they have gospel, they learn how to sing in the church, and to see how easily they can segue. This, this is the other image right here. This is the image we were looking for. All right, so this is the other image right here. Now, this this is very important to understand in this portion because it's continuing with the sin of um, um, Baal Segor or um, Baal Peor. Baal Peor is so the last place in which the Israelites encamped before passing over the Jordan to possess the land of Canaan. So this is the last place. So it's like, you know, we're coming to like the last time of NBC, of Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds, believe it or not. You understand? It might seem like it's increasing, but, you know, they say the darkest part of the, the night is just before is just before day. So the narrative of this, I'm going to go to the 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 Midbar, the Hebrew book of Numbers, the fourth volume, and go over this right here to get get a basic overview right here under Phineas. Under Phineas, it kind of ends off actually in chapter twenty uh, twenty uh, five. Um, okay, um, Phineas he proved himself to be zealous. Phineas's act was said to have staved off a plague. Now, all the time I see these plagues, you know, you'll see the, that Israel would murmur, would do something like Ephthah, would show themselves ungrateful, and, you know, Jah would, you know, um, some would say send a plague on them. But really, because of their action, they would reap what they have sown. So we read in a couple of areas of plagues breaking out, right, among Israel, among old Testament Israel in the wilderness, then I saw the link between Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds. When I saw this documentary on PBS, it was um, called The End of AIDS, right? It's like The End of AIDS or something like that? In Black America? It almost seemed like the way it was written, like The End of Black America, The End of AIDS in Black. And I said, wait. You know, at first, it, it, it didn't really, it, like, kind of dawn on me. You understand? It was almost like that darkest part of the night before the dawn. But then as we started to get into this Torah portion, I thought about it. I said, who's to say that the plague was not an Old Testament form of AIDS? Now, people say, oh, what well, we don't know about AIDS. I think what also brought this to mind was, was um, this T.D. Jakes guy, right, the Pottery House, right, where he basically was um, talking about, like, he has a seminar for AIDS and HIV, and he's talking about, oh, Paul didn't talk nothing about AIDS or HIV. He didn't leave us no instructions, so we don't know what to do about AIDS. We don't know what to speak about. He's like, there's nothing in the Bible that speaks to it. And I said, whoa, donkey. And he said, I mean, maybe not the donkey, maybe Bill riding on the donkey. You know, when we heard T.D. Jake say that, you know what he said, that there's nothing within the Word of God that speaks to AIDS. I know this is kind of kind of segue, and I want to actually deal with that subject matter separately. You know, saying about the plague being this, you know, being AIDS or being this disease, which manifests in so many different ways, but from a spiritual cause, and that main spiritual cause is disobedience, ingratitude, um, willful blindness. You understand, and worshiping false gods, worshiping false gods. So. Here in um, Phineas, or uh, Phineas portion, this actually deals with after the sin of Baal Peor, right? After the sin of Baal Peor. But I want you to have this up there so you can at least get a kind of a visual, you know, a visual cue. You understand how what we read about so-called four, three, four thousand years ago, allegedly, is basically the same thing manifesting today. And it's because of who we are, this people, and what time we're in. So the metaphysical of it is that Abel Shittim, or Shittim, uh, of Numbers 33, um, 49, they said it's believed to be the same place. Another Abel uh, Shittim, or Beit Shittim. Um, Shittim, or Shittim, Acacius, refers to resurrection life, which is interesting. When there has been a resurrection experience in consciousness, and inflow of new life, 
with the corresponding quickening, awakening, and vitalizing in mind and body. It's the Moab, and what does Moab represent? Moab represents the earthly mind in one is in evidence there are sure to be some troublous conditions to adjust. That's the idea of thorniness. So th this is an interesting portion right here because although most would read it as, as um, a, a zealous tree of, of Phineas killing a man with a Medeanite woman in the tent, is basically juking them, you know, saying, juking through the, the man and the woman, you know, saying, they say that this, they probably were in the act of sexual congress. You understand? Perhaps almost like a plow position. And Phineas came into the tent, you understand? And here we have it right here. John had announced that because Phineas had displayed his passion for John, John granted Phineas's God's pact of friendship and priesthood for all time. But that, that's getting a little bit ahead of I and I self. So let's bring the scripture, bring the scripture up, and let's just go through this. We're not going to go through Moab, but we know that a basic key of Moab, that Moab, um, from the Father, of the Father, you understand? And since the seed of the Father represents this earthly mind. So it says in verse, um, verse 2, it says, And they called the people to their sacrifice, the sacrifice of their gods. Who called them? The daughters of Moab. The daughters of Moab. They called the people. Which people? Israel. Hizbunim awoda amlako chacho mesh wa'it taru. His boom bellu, what a amla kochachuim segadu, and the people did eat. You know, niggas like to eat, right? They, they 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 ate, and they bowed down to their gods. Now it's interesting how this very same thing continues to go go on, even in the most innocent of um, patriotic ways, in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Because who's the patriarch? People say, I'm patriotic about America. Well, who's the patriarch? The great white father? That's a false god for Beta Israel. Abraham Lincoln, that's a false god for Beta Israel. You understand? Right name, but, but, but wrong character. Very wrong character. Verse 3, it says, And Israel joined himself to what? Baal Peor. How Negroes have joined themselves to this um, Shetim or Shetim lifestyle. We look at what Shetim means. Shetim means on one hand it's resurrection, but if there, but, but they can be if there's a Moabite involved. This earthly mentality, you know, in this earthly mentality that's involved, like a fleshy carnal mind, then there's thorns. You know, saying there's thorns and there's thistles. It's Raelim, the and it says, and the anger of Egiziabi here, the sustainer, was kindled against Negroes, blacks, and colors. Was kindled against Israel. Verse 4 says, Egiziabi Rim, Musain, Ye Egiziabi, Ye Kutawas, Enantka, Israel, Lindy, Meles, Ye Hizbun, Alek Och Hulu, West Death. That how you feet what a gizavi here the sick elacho alo. Now here's what's interesting about that resurrection connection. Get this. It says and the Lord and Adonai and the sustainer gizavi here said to Moses to Moshe, take all the heads, all the heads right of the people, the chiefs of the people, and hang them sick elacho, hang them. In other words, crucify them, hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away, may be turned away from um, Israel. This kind of reminds me of a pic. I don't know if we'll have time in this portion um, to bring it, you know, to bring it up. But um, I think about that Tupac pic. You remember that Tupac? And a lot of these artists, they've been doing this kind of thing. Even as a female artist that even has herself like crucified, a uh, country southern, southern, you know what I'm saying? A southern, southern artist or whatnot, hip hop, shit hop artist and everything. But it reminds me of the, um, what was the name of that album? The, the one with Tupac where he's like on the cross and everything like that. You know, it's, it's interesting what the Lord tells, what the Lord tells um, Moses to do. You understand, know with these who have joined themselves. So basically, these who joined themselves, they were under the death penalty. 
You know what I'm saying? Those who had all the heads, right? All the heads, the chiefs of the people, and they said, hang up before the sun, but hang up before the Lord against the sun, in the face of the sun, right? Because now we can see a form of sun worship to this. In fact, when the tabernacle was erected, um, the direction that Beta Israel would face would actually be west, or the so-called Amenta, you know what I'm saying? And their backs would be to the sun. But then in apostasy, right, in apostasy worships, that's when the people turned and they worshipped, you know what I'm saying, they actually worshipped the sun. So that's just a little interesting thing because some would say, oh, ancient Israel, they were sun worshippers only when they fell away. You know what I'm saying, only when they fell away, only when they fell astray. So anyway, we might not be able to bring up that particular picture of um, Tupac, but you'll know, you'll, you'll know the picture, the crucifixion on the cross. Yo, yo, was that on the cross picture right there? But let's try to get through this. We got about five or so, a little less than five minutes in this portion right here. We'll call this the Shet Team, um, 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 Shit Hop. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it says that they had to be hung, right? They had to be hung, and then it says right here, Musaim, yeah, it's Ralin Dan Danyoch. Inanta hulu abeela fegorina yete kata yete kata lutin sawo chachuhun giddelu giddelu and it was slay them kill them alacho it says and Moses said to the judges of Israel it's interesting I, I noticed this I don't know if you picked up on this but I noticed that um, the Lord said to Moses to crucify them sick alacho or hang them. Right, lynch them, lynch them, hang them, right? And um, Moses said to the judges, to the Danyoch, Musaim Yisraelin Danyoch, he said, um, slay ye every one his men that were joined to um, the Al Peor or the El Fegor or the Lord of the Opening. You know, saying the Lord of the Opening, and we can see that. I mean, this is this is really so clear right here. I mean, this is like that so-called what goddess pose, you understand? I mean, and, and, you know, the whole symbolic, I mean, so evident. I mean, Lord of the opening, the opening, the Lord would be like the pimp, you understand, or the Lord, the owner. You, you understand when everyone who now joins himself, you understand, that joins himself, right? He joins himself through that particular opening, you know, not to be too, you know, explicit about it, but it was a very... You know, it's a very lewd thing, and, you know, we know what's going on, or we should, you know, one should be familiar with what's going on in this present, you know, world with the lost sheep, you know, saying what they're caught up on. So verse 6 right here says, In their home, Ka Israel lijoch andu metito, be musena be israel lijoch machiber hulu feet, midya ma witun, and the tune say to what I want to mochu, you, I met that. In our song, be meganyao din kwan de jaf yalek su neber. It says, and behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought to his brethren a Medianitish woman in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation of the Machiber the Machber, the society, right, of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the congregation, of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, I had studied up on this, and one of the, it could have been a Yehudi or, or a, a, a Euro convert Jew who was writing about this, and he said there seemed to be like a break. You know what I'm saying? Between like verse six and verse seven. Because when you read verse seven right here, it says, Yeah, Kahinun, Ya Aaron, Lij, Ya Al Azar Lij, Sin Has, by Yogize, Ka Mahibberu, Mekakela Taneshto, the Ijut or Anesha, or Anesa. It says, And when Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest saw it. When he saw was, was saw something, it, it, it wasn't like he just saw them weeping. There's something missing right here. You understand? When they saw it, he rose up from among the congregation, 
right? So, so he must have saw something going on and took a javelin in his hand. Now, this is what's so symbolic of this. When he saw this, almost like this buffalo dance right here, right? He took this javelin, right? He took this javelin in his hand. Now, so, so what does he do when, well, after taking this javelin in his hand? Let's, let's use this Bible right here. He took the javelin in his hand, verse 8, and he went after the man of Israel, the man of Israel, into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly, through her belly. So it says right here, here's the key, so the plague, the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. That basically effectively ended the plague, the zealotry of Phineas. It ended the plague that was upon the people. Now, it's interesting that in most of these false god worships, right, even the club and the strip pole and all this kind of shit hop thing that's going on, the pimping and whoring and all that stuff, that sex is important. Sex is important in their ritual. You know, sex magic. You understand? And this is the doctrine of Balaam. To corrupt the people who could not be cursed. The Beta Israel could not be cursed. So Balaam said, if you can corrupt them and get them off of their morality. You know what I'm saying? Get them off of their morality. We know that even among a lot of the Rises and Rastafari, you know, go into the clubs, you 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 know, you meet one of these these so called gals, you know what I mean? And you figure, well, you know, you'll convert her to well maybe you don't even figure that. You know what I'm saying? And and we know the rest, basically. So we can see how that can even happen to those who are supposed to be on a higher moral you know, in a higher moral level to get seduced, in other words, to get seduced. Now what broke out, it seems like there was a plague, a plague. Some